I'm ready. I'm ready. What up, what up? Hey guys, it is Nicole and Cynthia here. We are super excited because we want to share something with you. Is that right, Sin? Yep. So right now we are going through the shift, right? We're well into the shift and everyone is right now. They're trying to get their shift together. So um, we actually got inspired because one of our teammates actually came to us and said that they were stumped. They did not know how to get beyond some objections that um, some buyers and some sellers had about moving forward with either selling their home or purchasing a new one right now. So, so she was we, a new agent, right? Yeah. And she had all these people who she was connecting with on the phone, right? Because of course, the new agent, that's what you do, you build your database. Well, she's connecting with them and she's having these fantastic conversations for about a month or so, maybe a month and a half. And then all of a sudden, one day, they just said, no. People just started bailing. One after another, after another, after another. And she was like, what do I do? As a new agent, you can imagine, you know, she's freaking out. And she's like, did I make the decision, the right decision to get into this field? Absolutely. And so she wasn't just working with buyers. She was actually had listing people who were looking to list. She had people who are looking to buy. She was working with some buyers at the time. So she was all just moving along, just fantastic. And so when she came to us with this, like, everyone's just starting to say no. So of course our questions were, well, you know, what was your biggest objection that you're struggling with all these things. So we went through every single detail of the biggest objections that people were receiving. And in that case, we found that there was six huge objections that agents were getting, six of them. Out of all of them, it all boiled down to these six. And these six, you could branch off to maybe like 10, right? But from those six, those right there would be the, the six that would be able to fix any type of objection that you get, okay? And so with that information, Cynthia, what do we do? So we put together a list of objections and we came up with data to, well, we actually came up with a way to overcome those objections to help people see the opportunities in the current market conditions. And then we followed up those responses with data to support our um, our rebuttal, I guess you would say. Our so, objection um, handler. What'd you say? Our objection handler. Yes, yes. So today we want to um, share one with you guys. And um, something that, you know, a lot of people are saying out there right now is, um, you know, the, there's going to be a lot of foreclosures in our market. And um, some people are getting scared about that. Some people are starting to compare it to 2008. Um, some investors are getting excited about it and um, actually kind of putting some things on hold until the foreclosures start coming through. So right now we're trying to get people past the holding patterns. We're trying to get people past you know, um, not moving forward with the sale or a purchase because they fear that foreclosures are gloom and doom for our market right now. And so within that, that's one of the objection handlers, one of the six that we have um, to share with you. So today we're just going to go over the one with foreclosures um, that it also you can access all six of them by clicking the link below. We're going to be able to give you guys a link that literally you can log in, not log in, sorry, click on the link. 
Once you get the link, you're going to have access to all six of the objection handlers, as well as what we call a context video. Context video is a video explaining why the market is doing what it's doing, what's going on, where then you have a better idea of how to explain these things to a different types of audiences. If you're working with first time home buyers, if you're working with first time home sellers, if you're looking at, you know, working with sellers who are um, moving into a smaller home or upgrading. Um, and then also if you're working at uh, investors. So whatever kind of area that you're working in, the context video will show you how to explain each of these objection handlers and use the context behind it to be able to actually close them and helping them get off the fence and into a contract. So uh, today we're going to share again the objection of there's going to be a lot of foreclosures. And Cynthia, you're so right. Everyone is saying like, hey, this is a great opportunity. Let me hold my money and wait for these foreclosures that are coming. Or, you know, people are going like, oh my gosh, I can't be where with I don't have any cash. What if this is where the market's going into this huge recession and like all of these types of things. So it's one or the other. And so today what we're going to do is share your share our screen with one of the pieces of um, material that you're going to receive. With the objection handlers, you have three parts to this. You have the context video, you have each script for every single objection handler, and then you have a resource, meaning that a lot of people don't just believe you, right? So you need like a backup to say, hey, you know what, let me send you this link. You can even look at where the news or where the data or where wherever it's gonna be from, that supports that um, objection handler. So then you even have that extra uh, little umph, right? So let me share my screen with you. Okay, so here we go. And yes, these are secret objection handlers that our team has been using. Scroll down, here we go. So. The market is going to crash and there will be a lot of foreclosures. Your response is as follows, Cynthia. So here is information that you can paraphrase into your own words, right? Current homeowners are way less likely to default on their home loan because borrowers with sub subpar credit dropped drastically. So a lot of people are not foreclosing on their homes because they can't afford to pay for their homes. So I would say that this means that the the the, the people that were being the, the borrowers that we have recently have not been um, unable to make their mortgage payments. A lot like if you compare this to 2008 when they were lending to uh, you know, people who, who had a social security number and they were not making sure that their ability to repay was legitimate enough. So um, we're not gonna have an over influx of um, irresponsible borrowers basically is what that means. So we're not going to be experiencing as much of a uh, epidemic of, of of people who can't afford to pay their mortgage, okay? Let's put some um, numbers to that. So the numbers we were looking at, and this is as of last week. So today is November 30th. This is as of November 23rd. Um, there was a release by the National Association of Realtors with the economic update and outlook. With that, we specifically looked at foreclosure numbers. These are national numbers, not just Texas or Florida or California, they're national numbers, meaning that there's going to be some states that are even better than this, such as Texas, Colorado, and Florida, other states that may be a little bit higher. Um, but at the end of the day, the foreclosures for today and today's market as of November, the foreclosures were around 3% versus 2008 when foreclosures were over a third which is over 33%. Mm. That is huge. That right there is proof in itself that foreclosures are not going to be the way that they were in 2008. Cynthia is so right. 
borrowers are not being lent money if they're not pretty much overqualified, right? So at the end of the day, they have a less likeliness to default on their loans and it's proven by data, nationwide data. So the next part of this, Cynthia, is? Is that um, housing inventory is actually low right now. So even though the amount of inventory has been increasing, right, in comparison to last year or this time last year, which we all know it was pandemic policies, we had 2% interest rates, we had people relocating and flocking from all over the world, right here to Texas. And so uh, they were just flocking all over the place. Everyone was migrating, okay? And so there was just a natural housing shortage, okay? Um, but even with the amount of inventory still increasing as opposed to this year and last year, it's still pretty low, okay? So the amount of homes needed to sustain a normal real estate market is about six months. So anything more than six months is an abundance. And that's when, you know, home prices go down. Anything less than that would be considered a shortage, which is what we just came out of and what we radically experienced over the last couple of years, which causes prices to go up, okay? So right now we're experiencing the most appreciation that we've ever experienced in, in that short of a hike, okay? And now this thing is, is that basically we have been as low in some markets as one month or even less, right? And as inventory. And those were COVID years. Now we are post COVID, get it? Yes, we are more than one month. Um, but what we're seeing is that we're typically, depending on the market, of course, but we're typically ranging between two and four months. And these are nationwide numbers. When I say two, yes, it's going to be some markets that are two months, maybe even some markets that are lower than that, right? Maybe even one month. But I would say that the majority of them are going to be between two and three months. And you're going to have some maybe as high as four months. Um, and those are going to be more like the red states, not talking politics. I'm talking red as far as economy, guys. Um, so. <laughs> That is going to be the range that we're looking at, again, the end of November 2022. Absolutely. So um, as the market is um, progressing at this point, it's looking like we're heading into about six to seven months worth of inventory. All right, right now. And so the market, the market is drastically different than 2008, and there is significant data supporting this projection that there will not be a crash or a surplus of foreclosures like there were in 2008. And we've got a resource link here to prove it. And if you want to click on that, just to kind of show someone the data, Absolutely. Like don't just take my word for it. So this is a specific link that you can send them. Um, and this is not, no, these links are not affiliated with us. These links are not affiliated with anyone specific. It's literally data that we pulled um, that support different um, of the objections. Right. So here you can see it's a big, bold title. <laughs> what the true difference is so that people can truly get educated on this because there is a lot of um, misunderstanding and just miseducation um, as far as the market goes right now. So if you send them this link, it will support your objection handler. Now, as far as, I mean, it'll go everything from decreasing values to rate of appreciation, even the bottom line here, it's talking about um, the housing market 360 uh, flip, right? So it really walks them through what's going on. And then as well, you can watch the context video, which is in the link as not this link, but in the um, objection handler as well. And that'll give you a little bit of background information as well. Then do you want to point anything out? Um, basically, um, back in 2008, we headed into a recession when people lost so much equity in their homes. So not only could they not afford to pay, I mean, the market tanked so stinking bad that people lost so much equity. And, um, you know, fortunately, the state of Texas really only decreased in equity about 0.3 or about 3%.
So um, in comparison to the rest of the world that was significantly hurt, Texas's economy was so strong that we only decreased about 3% in values at that time. Um, I would say this, uh, this time, uh, 2023, heading into a recession, people are going in people are going in with the most amount of equity that they've had, okay? Like, you know, increasing, you know, $100,000 in a year or two is significant. So what that means is that even when the market values tend to um, level out, right, um, people can still afford to sell their home. They have enough equity that they can now afford to sell their home. So that's why it's important to understand why um, this recession is still going to be a healthy time, you know, to be able to sell because a lot of people will be able to afford to pay you as their licensed real estate agent that they know and trust to sell their asset and not be raked across the coals and having significant loss. Now, uh, another thing is we'd love to share with you a economic outlook, like I had mentioned earlier, that was just released last week by the um, National Association of Realtors. And this outlook actually points out that November, year over year, we had an equity increase. So that means that values actually went up year over year nationally, meaning that if you start looking at specific states, like we had mentioned a couple of the extra, extra green states are Texas, Florida, and Colorado, um, those states are going to be even higher than the average. So at the end of the day, even though everyone feels, feels, I get it, it feels like we've really slowed down or things have taken a turn, but you got to keep in mind that was because we were running at two and 300% of what we were normally running prior to COVID. So any kind of slowdown is going to feel like a major slowdown. So here, what we're looking at is that it's, it's data, actual factual data of homes, what their list price were, what their sales price were, how many homes were still sold at list price or higher. Again, as of last month, 42% of homes were still sold at list price or higher. That is a statistic supporting the fact that our home values are still good. And that, again, is nationally, guys. So at the end of the day, do not take this as a, you know, uh, a downtime. It's really a time to be able to build the business that you truly desire to build and build the foundation that's strong enough to make it through any economy any market. And that's what we specifically want to help you do by supporting you and providing you the resources and the links and the scripts and all that stuff that we personally use to be able to help our teams or our clients or our investors work through and understand truly what's going on in the market instead of listening to the news or hearsay or third party information that a lot of people did go through 2008 and did get burned really bad. And if I had gotten burned really bad too, I would probably feel the same way. Uh, nope, I'm not spending, right? Until they truly see the data and understand that it is not the same situation for so many reasons. The context video lays into that as well. Um, but we wanna go ahead and share this link with you. Um, it'll be in the comments below. And then also we're going to be uploading this to our YouTube channel. For more information, you can always follow us on our YouTube channel or you can join our group. We pretty much share almost the same information in both places, slightly some different information on YouTube and slightly different information in the group. But you guys are always welcome to reach out to us and DM us if you have any questions. Um, regarding an objection that you're getting that maybe wasn't one of the six most popular ones that we currently have um, on the objection handlers. Yeah, so um, our our YouTube channel is Trust Builders Network. That's where you can reach us and, and view our content and information. And bottom line right now, I mean, regardless of what's going on in the economy, real estate is such a sure bet. Okay, there's in, there is opportunity when the market is up, there's opportunity when the market is down. 
So you can capitalize in both ways. Just know that uh, right now there is definitely opportunity without as many buyers out there, you've got a lot less competition. There's a lot less uh, multiple offers happening. So um, there's a more inventory out there. So people have an opportunity to, you know, really find their dream home and not have to um, hand over their firstborn and their cute little dog and uh, in order to win this stupid house, right? So um, there's a lot of opportunity there, bottom line, and people can really afford to pay you to sell their home right now. So um, just to let you guys know, we're not looking forward to any crazy crash um, as compared to 2008, bottom line. Thank you guys. That is awesome. Awesome news. Like, and this is something you can take back with you and share the awesome news with your people, right? Absolutely. So, um, we are going to hop off for the night, but y'all have it a wonderful night and we will see you guys again tomorrow. Bye.